I'm sure a lot of you guys are here for the title of the video, which is something to do with David Silverman. A lot of you guys may not know Silverman, so let me just kind of give you a basic rundown on, on who the guy is. You can see a picture of him here on my screen. He was the president of American Atheists for like a really, really long time. And he was really, really good at fundraising. He's kind of a, um, inflammatory, I guess is the word. He's, a, he's an inflammatory dude. He would put up billboards around the country that would say things like, you know it's a lie, we know it's a lie, just leave, or something like that, about religion. And it caught people's attention, it got him on the news, it got him coverage, it got, it got American atheists, donors... It, he was actually really, really good for the funding of American Atheists. He was really good at funding. But um, a while back, there were some allegations that were made against him, some sexual impropriety, and it was covered in BuzzFeed. It was basically an expose. And they didn't really name who the person was. It turns out... It was one of the board members, one of American Atheist board members' wives. And she came out and she said that he raped her. It was a really, really big deal. He got fired from American Atheists. Not necessarily for that reason. They didn't list a reason, but it was around that same time. And the board member's wife isn't the only one who made that claim. There were others who claimed that he was abusing his power. Here's something that I feel I need to say about it up front. I have an issue with people in a position of authority or, or a position of power engaging in sexual relations with people who are not of the same level of power. So Silverman would go to conferences uh, as the president of American Atheists, and he would sleep with people. He met at the conferences, just regular attendees. That's wrong. There's nothing okay about that. They look up to you. They respect you. They do not view you as equals in terms of power. It is absolutely wrong to sleep with even one person at a conference, period, that you're speaking at or you're the, that you're the president of or any of that. It's wrong. Bottom line, he should have been fired for that alone. That's my opinion on it. And eventually he was. He was fired. But like I said, they didn't list a reason. So it's been like a year or two years or something like that. This news just broke that he was rehired by a new company. So I figured we'd go through this article. It's by Hemant Mehta. A lot of you guys know that I actually read from Hemant Mehta's blog a lot. Um... You guys should definitely support Hemant Mehta. He's awesome. So let's read this article by Hemant Mehta and see what, what Hemant has to say about it. I respect the hell out of him. So we'll see what he has to say. David Silverman, the former head of American Atheists, will become the next executive director of Atheist Alliance International, AAI, once again giving him a formal position within a movement from which he was unceremoniously kicked out last year. The announcement was made this morning. And while the organizations may seem identical to outsiders or anyone who's watched South Park, there's a world of difference between them. In case you need a refresher, Silverman had been president of American Atheists since 2010 and an employee of the organization since 2004. For a few years, when atheist billboards were making headlines across the country, Silverman made several appearances on Fox News, one of which was forever immortalized in a meme. In 2012, he was the public face of the Reason Rally in Washington, D.C. I actually went to the Reason Rally in 2016. It was actually, it, it was awesome. I absolutely loved going to the Reason Rally. It's kind of a shame they're not doing it again, but anyway. Which drew tens of thousands of people. He's also the author of the book Fighting God, an Atheist Manifesto for a Religious World, in which he made his case for in-your-face firebrand activism. In April of 2018, Silverman was temporarily suspended from his position, only to be fired days later. Initially, the concern was a financial conflict of interest between his personal work, the book, and his public work for AA. 
That's why he was initially suspended by the AA Board of Directors as they investigated the matter. However, around the same time, the board learned of sexual misconduct allegations against Silverman, documented most extensively in an article for BuzzFeed by reporter Peter Ald Aldu, I guess. BuzzFeed is notoriously untrustworthy. I know that and I understand that, but this is not the only allegation. This allegation was actually made by a board member's wife of American Atheists, come to find out. That, that came out fairly recently. That's a really big deal. The dude was known to sleep with people at conferences. Anyway, it says there were two major allegations. One involved a student Silverman met at a conference who said he used his position of power to pressure her into having sex with him. She had asked him for a job, which he said he couldn't provide and said in her allegation that she was intoxicated during their encounter. I don't know if, the, if she was or not. Doesn't even matter to me, honestly. Should not have been sleeping with her, period. Intoxicated or not. BuzzFeed also quoted another woman who said that in 2015, Silverman suddenly forced himself on her at American Atheist's annual convention during an after party. That meeting left bruises on her body. Silverman admitted to the sex, but said both encounters were entirely consensual. He did not think the student was drunk. He may have violated good decision-making, but he maintained that he wasn't some sort of predator. I don't give a shit if you're a predator or not. That decision-making is enough to ostracize you from the community, as far as I'm concerned. Or at least get you out of a position of power. You're obviously abusing your power right now. That is not acceptable. I don't, seriously, who, who gives a shit if you're a predator or not? That's not what I'm concerned about. You're abusing your power. That's wrong. As for the financial issue, Silverman now quotes an AA board member on his personal website who says David w did not embezzle from American atheists. That, however, doesn't address the conflict of interest issue. American atheists hasn't said anything publicly about the results of their investigation. Nick Fish, AA's current leader and the person who eventually replaced Silverman, told me in a statement, Our board of directors fully stands behind its decision to terminate Mr. Silverman's employment. After reviewing the allegations and materials presented, the board concluded that there were violations of American atheist policies that warranted termination. The results of a review completed by an outside investigator confirmed that decision. In recent weeks, Silverman's been trying to stage something of a comeback. After more than a year away from the spotlight, he's been doing interviews with just about any YouTuber willing to speak with him, including some who regularly trash feminism and condemn social justice warriors. That would be Sargon. He went on Sargon of Akkad's YouTube channel. I've talked about Sargon on the channel before. Uh, I've talked about how, you know, he's an anti-SJW, quote-unquote, as some people would say and how he's extremely toxic. He's a 9-11 truther. He's a climate change denialist, climate change skeptic, quote-unquote, as he would say. He's an anti-feminist. There are actual, real issues that feminism addresses that need to be addressed. Even if, even if it's not in the U.S., let's just say, hypothetically speaking, there are zero issues that need to be addressed by feminism in the U.S., which I don't agree with, but I'm granting it for the sake of argument. Even if that is the case, even if there are no issues in the U.S. feminism needs to address, there are issues feminism needs to address in Saudi Arabia, in Yemen, in Qatar, in Iraq, in Iran, Syria, all of those places. So how can you call yourself an anti-feminist? Give me a fucking break. There are some things that are actually necessary that feminism does for people. There are people walking around with scarves over their heads. There are people whose faces you will never see because they're oppressed by a patriarchy, by Saudi Arabia, by other countries. They need feminism. And you're sitting here demonizing it calling it a mental disease. Give me a fucking break. And Silverman's going on this dude's channel. Still calls himself a feminist, though. Silverman does. Yeah, I bet. I bet you're a fucking feminist. Going on with the article. 
After more than a year away from the spotlight, he's been doing interviews with just about any YouTuber willing to speak with him, including some who regularly trash feminism and condemn social justice warriors. That would be Sargon, as I said. If he's trying to re-endear himself to progressives, it's not exactly a wise strategy. The only reason I suspect that Silverman went on uh, Sargon's channel is because people like Sargon are the only ones who would have him on, honestly. Everybody in the community knows Silverman is a piece of work, and the only people willing to work with him are fellow pieces of shit, unfortunately. I, I just want to clarify here real quick, though. There are some people who had Silverman on who are not necessarily pieces of shit. Armin Navabi, I don't think he's a bad guy, actually. I think he wants to have discourse, discussion. I think this is the wrong person to have it with, but, you know, that's your thing. You want to talk to him, then you can talk to him. But there are some people he's been on, or some people's channels he's been on who are real pieces of shit. Silverman, in those interviews, portrays himself as a victim of an outrage mob. He rationalizes his actions. He trashes what various atheist organizations are doing or not doing, suggesting that someone like him, a firebrand, is needed to fight religion. While he apologizes for being unethical and immoral, he insists he's not a criminal or the guy depicted in the allegations or in BuzzFeed. To that end, he's filed a defamation lawsuit against the women who accused him of misconduct, um, BuzzFeed, and American Atheists. It says here, he trashes what various theist organizations are doing, suggesting that someone like him, a firebrand, is needed to fight religion. While he apologizes for being unethical and immoral, he, he insists he's not a criminal. I don't give a shit if you're a criminal. That, I, that's completely irrelevant. You were the president of American atheists. You cannot be unethical and immoral. I don't fucking care. You have a responsibility to be morally upright. You are in the public eye. People look up to you, David. People look up to you. You cannot be unethical and immoral. They model their behavior after your behavior. You are not taking this seriously enough. You should not be a public figure. You're abusing your power. It says, in addition, he's rebranded himself as a firebrand for good. He spoke to the Washington Post to tell his side of the story. He also began selling insurance to make money. Oh, that, that sucks for him. We don't need firebrands in this movement. I'm sorry. We need moderate, non-extremist people. We need people who aren't going to burn everybody to the ground around them, including themselves. We need voices of reason. That's what this is all about. We're atheists. We should be voices of reason. Not fucking extremists. We left extremism behind. Do you remember that? Why are you advertising and taking pride in the fact that you're a firebrand? I know it gets you donations. I don't care. Sometimes there, there are things that are more important than money. And you know what those things are? It's morals and ethics. That's what's more important than money. I don't want you in this movement, David. I don't want you to represent me in any way. That, that, that just pisses me off. That whole situation really just pisses me off. Let's move on to another subject. First off, coming from Trigor, was what do you tell Till, think about Greta Thunberg and the climate change speech she had given? I heard about that. I don't actually know enough about that to speak on it, honestly. I know that people say that it was a very inspired and impassioned speech. Let's take a quick look at the, uh, at the transcript here. My message is that we'll be watching you. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I, shouldn't, I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You've stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough 
when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. That's pretty insightful, I would say. I feel like that's exactly what people needed to hear, but honestly, I heard a lot of people talking shit about her, saying that, you know, people are, uh, whatever the hell they say about that kind of thing, just making shit up and saying that she's doing it for the popularity, whatever the hell they say, you know. Um, I, I could not agree with her more. And sometimes what people need is an impassioned speech. So I'm honestly, I'm glad that she said it. Uh, this one from PJ, the genealogist. Would you ever do a video on Orthodox Judaism? Like, for example, Chabad? I went to a meetup uh, not too long ago, a few, like a couple of months ago, I think. I went to a meetup with genetically modified skeptic Drew in New York City. And I had the chance to speak to a Jewish guy who was there. And he was telling me that some Jewish groups are most definitely cults. Because uh, he saw that I did a video a while back saying that Judaism isn't a cult. And he wanted to kind of set the record straight. He, he was full-blown Jewish, wears a yarmulke, and he even works in, like, this school making sure that... Well, I, you know what? I better not say, because I don't want to, like, out him or anything, but... He's very, very integrated with the religion. We'll just say that. Extremely integrated. He could not separate himself from it, basically, even if he wanted to. But he was telling me that there are some Jewish neighborhoods in New York City. Every building in this neighborhood, like on, a, on the Sabbath, all of the elevators in every single building will stop at every single floor, just all the way. They'll, they'll go to the top, then they'll go to the bottom. Go to the top, go to the bottom. Because if you hit a button, it's considered working, and you're breaking God's law. There are some extreme environments, extreme uh, practices in some Jewish uh, sects, basically, or some Jewish denominations. So, there, yeah, there, there are Jewish cults, most definitely. I don't know enough about it to name them or, or tell you which ones are which, but they exist. I don't know, maybe I'd do a video on it one day, but I'd, I feel like I'd need to be very informed on it before I did, because I wouldn't want to fuck anything up. Uh, this one coming from Glenn. Is Boogie's channel dying? If so, wait, if so, why do you think so? Boogie2988? I'm assuming? <clears throat> yeah, I think his channel is dying a little bit. The reason I think that it's dying is because he got famous off of videos that were not advertiser-friendly, and... You know, with Adpocalypse number one, number two, number three, and now number four, that just is tanking him, and he knows that it's tanking him. You know, this is an interesting fact. Anytime I talk politics on the podcast, my YouTube num my YouTube numbers go down, but my podcast, like Apple iTunes Podcasts, Stitcher, Castbox, and all that other stuff, those numbers go way up, like way up way higher than I would expect them to be. So anytime I talk about news or politics on YouTube, it's down. On Stitcher, it's up. Why? Because YouTube's throttling it, obviously. I mean, they've basically said that. I think they have said that, just openly. That they're favoring, uh, what do you call it? They're favoring mainstream news sources now for all politics or, or anything like that. So it's really disappointing. I think that's why Boogie's channel's not doing super hot. That's why I started Storyfire. This one coming from Fort. What do you think of the American school system? The worst teacher I've ever had has recently been moved to teach first grade, and I'm kind of worried. I have long-lasting emotional damage from that shit. I think the American school system is kind of a mess. It could be a lot worse than it is, but it's, it's not great. It's very, very heavily influenced by Christianity. But let me give you an example of something that kind of gets to me a little bit. A while back, Kylie came home with a sheet of paper telling her that it was bring your Bible to school day or something like that. And I was like, where did you get this? Who gave you this? She said her teacher gave it to her. Her teacher gave her that. That's a religious piece of paper. That's not allowed, right? That's like favoring religion. Turns out the way they got around it is the Good News Club is a school or is a, a it's a school club that's like church sponsored and teachers are allowed to hand out school club literature or paperwork or whatever. 
So teachers are allowed to hand out religious tracts and religious paperwork because the Good News Club exists. It's kind of messed up. There's a lot messed up with the school system. But like I said, it could be worse. Before I take more questions, actually, let me just, um, uh, let me read a super chat. This is from Alpha Vader. Do you worship the mighty meatball of the sky? I don't think so. Possibly? Yes, I do. I'm sorry, yes. I do worship the great meatball of the sky. Here's another one. The W in wrench stands for weeb. Please, no. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. I think that was from Fork. Thank you, Fork. That's awesome. I'm the voice to which said voice to did nothing wrong. That's just a flat out lie, and you know that, that it's a flat out lie. So I'm not even going to dignify it with the response, honestly. Omega Riley says, Hey, a T Dog, just dropping in to say that voice two did nothing wrong and to remind everyone to like the podcast. We love you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, Omega Riley. And yes, they did. You cannot get away with it with super chats. That's just a flat out lie, and you know it is. Got another super chat from. We have little faith. Voice 2 did nothing wrong, and we've also commandeered the pumpkins and made them our own. Mwahaha. Yes, they did. Voice 2 did do something wrong, and you know they did. Nervardia, would you do universal medicine? It uses burping to expel evil spirits. The leader thinks he's a reincarnation of several people, which he found out on the toilet. Andy the Fellows touched on it. Interesting. I've not heard of that. That's crazy. Mr. Atheist, does he read Super Chats? Let's test this. You know what really sucks? Mr. Atheist, garbage. No, no, Mr. Atheist isn't garbage. He's garage, remember? You, you're spreading your garage around town. So, yeah, I do read Super Chats. I appreciate that, uh, Jimmy. That's awesome. And then we got a couple more. Jesus Christ, we have little faith. I grew up in Louisiana. Separation of church and state was basically non-existent, and my parents still homeschooled me because they thought the public school system was too worldly. That is intense. I was also homeschooled for a few years. It wasn't good. Homeschooling, I believe, is not good. You should not do it. M says... Voice 2 wants to be your ally. Just say we did nothing wrong. No, you did. You, you fucked up, okay? Voice 2 fucked up. <laughs> Just come to terms with it. Neil says, hit me up for the Jewish stuff. If you're going to do a, a video on it, man, I'll get you back. That's interesting. I may have to do that. That sounds really cool. I feel like I, I missed another super chat, though. I feel like I was missing one more. Did I miss one more? Oh, wait. And sip my tea. No, I didn't miss one? I thought Fork did did one, and... Okay, never mind then. Well, thank you guys for the Super Chats. Appreciate that. Do you have one more question? After this, I'm going to move on to some Mormon stuff. I think Mr. Atheist would appreciate that. Uh, this one coming from Oriax. Hey, question for you. If I want people to give me money for my YouTube, but want them to be able to get something back in return, how can I set that up? Or who do I need to get in contact with? It depends on what you want to get back in return. Um, Patreon is a good system for for that honestly patreon is actually really useful for that i have teespring also and teespring is uh like it, they do drop shipping so you don't have to like put literally any work into it you just direct people to it and you get paid super simple but if you're doing something like i'm doing where you're like selling objects that you have to produce with my um my 3D printing stuff. Actually, here, let me show you. Here's something that I just printed for somebody. It's a uh, Game Boy stand, for example. It's, like I said, it's a 3D printed stand. So that, that's the kind of thing I do. And I have, to, um, I have to physically print it and mail it to them myself. If it's a system like that, Etsy's pretty good for it. That's what I've been using. Etsy's really good. So I'd suggest that one. Got another super chat from We of Little Faith. Edited for clarity is just cult speak for we realized this was bullshit and had to discreetly change it. I agree. Edited for clarity is just cult speak for we realized this was bullshit and had to discreetly change it. Earlier I was saying that Jehovah's Witnesses did the exact same thing. They, they changed the wording on the baptism questions. They used to ask you two questions for baptism. It was something to the effect of... Um, there's a whole thing about the baptism questions here. They used to be, have you repented of your sins, dedicated yourself to Jehovah, and accepted his way of salvation through Jesus Christ? That was number one. You're supposed to say yes. And the second one was, do you understand that your baptism identifies you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with Jehovah's organization? Again, say yes to that. But they changed them throughout the years. Under Charles Taze Russell, the founder, I guess the, this is what the questions used to be. 
Have you repented of sin with such restitution as you are able, and are you trusting in the merit of Christ's sacrifice for the forgiveness of your sins and the basis of your justifications? Kind of confusing wording. Then there was, have you made a full consecration of yourself with all the powers that you possess? Talent, money, time, influence. All to the Lord to be used faithfully in his service even unto death. And then the third one was, on the basis of these confessions, we acknowledge you as a member of the household of faith and give you and give to you such the right hand of fellowship, not in the name of any sect or party or creed, but in the name of the Redeemer, our glorified Lord, and his faithful followers. Oh, I guess that's just what he would say. That wasn't a third question. So in 1985, this is the, the previous version, the most recent previous version. On the basis of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, have you repented of your sins and dedicated yourself to Jehovah to do his will? That would be number one. And number two is, do you understand that your dedication and baptism identify you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with God's Spirit-directed organization? So that's the one that changed, number two, I believe. It changed to, do you understand that your baptism identifies you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with Jehovah's organization. So they cut out in association with God's spirit-directed organization and made it in association with Jehovah's organization. That's an interesting change. Why did they change that? That is fascinating. I guess they don't think that their organization is spirit-directed? I don't know. That's really, really interesting, though. Anyways, yeah, thank you for the super chat. We have little faith. Kind of got off track there. Got another super chat. Shay L., would you do a video on the Genesis 2 church and MMS? I was forced to take MMS as a teenager and it really messed me up, but this channel, Mr. Atheist, and others have helped me a lot. Thank you. I've actually heard of that, Genesis 2 and MMS. Um, uh, somebody mentioned that to me recently, and it's really fascinating. It is something that I'd like to look into a little bit more. Uh, and I, I'm really glad that we were able to help you. Me, Mr. Atheist, and others. That really makes me happy. I'm glad to hear that I, I and Jimmy could contribute something to somebody you know that's really what it's all about to me then we have little faith again lots of googling tonight get that googly knowledge t yeah googly knowledge i appreciate that i i will i will get that googly knowledge uh mr atheist says he wants to do mormon stuff another <laughs> another super chat all right let's get into the mormon stuff then so as a lot of you guys know there has been um a lot of Mormon stuff going on lately. Some of you may not know, so I'll clarify for you. I'll tell you what's happening. The Mormons do a general conference, I think twice a year. I think it's every six months. And they do a lot of like updated information. They tell people about various different things. Every time there's some crazy thing that happens with the Mormon church, it's because there's a general conference talk about it. Like all of the leadership goes there and gives talks. Right now, uh, Russell M. Nelson is the president, I believe, of the... Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or something like that. Anyway, he's also known as the prophet, so he can reveal information from God or whatever. So he gave a couple of talks, and I just want to go over some of the highlights and see what, um, what they had to say. President Russell M. Nelson promised weeks ago that there would be exciting announcements during the fall general conference. He wasn't kidding. Here's a summary of the significant news and sermons from this past weekend's sessions. There were overhauls to programs for the young men and young women, including a long lobbied for gender inclusive shift in the young women's theme from daughters of heavenly father to heavenly parents. The move elevates Mormonism's belief in a heavenly mother. The activity budgets also will be equitably divvied between the girls and boys. Okay, interesting. The activity budgets will also be equitably divvied between the girls and boys because of the Boy Scouts from which the church officially will sever ties at year's end more money in the past often went to young men. That's something. Honestly, they've got a lot of work to do before I'm happy with them by any stretch of the imagination. So take this with a grain of salt. The term auxiliary for a non-priesthood entity such as Relief Society, Primary or Sunday School has been retired and replaced by organization. Sorry, usually, I don't usually do this, but I think Mr. Atheist wants to come on the stream I'm not really sure how to add him midstream, though, so give me a minute to figure that out real quick. Hang on. People are fangirling out over here. The term auxiliary for a non-priesthood entity such as Relief Society Primary or Sunday School has been treated, I'm sorry, has been retired and replaced by organization. Interesting. The new temple recommend questions were unveiled. 
they still cover the same territory. The word of wisdom, for example, and tithing remain, but the language in 11 questions has been, in Nelson's words, edited for clarity. Jehovah's Witnesses did the same thing recently. That's super weird. They changed the baptism questions. Hey, baby. Hey, what's up? Yo. I know you can't. can't uh, you tried to do Mormons without me. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody can see you. They can only see me, but they can hear you at least. So they, they should be able to hear you That's at least. Good. So, uh, have you seen like any of the highlights from the general conference or no, funny enough, I haven't, I'm actually learning about hearing that these things are going in. Uh, uh, there's a lot of the stuff that you've gone over so far is stuff that, um, I think we were expecting to happen because once again, remember that, uh, God is always right behind society yeah. with social issues yeah. in the Mormon church. Um, but I'm pretty surprised that they are actually going into the uh, heavenly parents thing more because that's a topic they really don't like to talk about. I was going to say, I don't even know what that is. Can you give me a little insight into that? Yeah. Uh, so so you have old Mormon belief and then you have um, what still is the Mormon belief, but most Mormons don't know it and therefore deny it. And the old Mormon belief was basically we have a heavenly father who has many wives and she, uh, uh, they, rather, uh, are basically eternally popping out spirit babies. Okay. Uh, however, this thing happens where uh, the quote-unquote intelligences are organized into spirits. That's having that's a result of some kind of spiritual sex that God is having with his wives. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. so that in that case, let me reread this a little bit here, and that with that context, maybe I'll we'll, we'll understand a little bit better. Um, there are overhauls to programs for young men and young women, including the long lobbied for gender inclusive shift to the young women theme. That's the one, right? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of of heavenly parents instead of just heavenly father. Right. The move elevates right. Mormonism's belief in a heavenly mother. The activity budgets yep. also will be equitably divvied, blah, blah, blah. Interesting. Okay. That is super fascinating. That's a really interesting shift. What do you think about it? Yeah. So one thing that's really worth noting there is uh, uh, they in the past have always said, like, when you bring up Heavenly Mother, their thing is always like, oh, that's too sacred. We can't talk about that. No. Uh, Heavenly Mother is, and this is actually part of what they cover when they're doing their whole, like, um, uh, uh, you know, we don't see women as not equal to men. In fact, right. we see them as superior and they will point to things like that's why we don't even talk about Heavenly Mother, because if people were to uh, use her name in vain the way that they use God's name in vain, that would be such a, a much larger atrocity. That would be a much bigger sin. OK, that makes sense. So the next change here that I'm looking at is new temple recommend questions were unveiled they still cover the same territory the word of wisdom for example and tithing remain but the oh. language in 11 questions has been in nelson's words edited for clarity have you heard anything about the new temple recommend questions i'll have to go through it we should actually just conduct a faux temple recommend interview me to you or you to That'd me one cool. day on air yes yeah oh that God. would be fun that would be fun yeah all right so i'll move on to yeah. another one i was going to pull up the uh I was going to pull up the questions, but it's not working because ad blocker, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the next one is eight new temples, including two more in Utah in Orem and Taylorsville were announced. Several days later, the church also released a rendering of the planned Leighton Temple, one of 23 either operating or coming to the Beehive State. So I guess they're building new temples and that's a fairly big deal. It means they're growing at least, right? Um, yes, yes and no. So, uh, Gordon B. Hinckley was the president two presidents ago. He was the main one of my, uh, youth and it was a big thing for him that the church focus on building temples. Mm. Uh, and, and so they have been over the years since then making it a focus. We already know they have tons of money and that their money isn't even just dependent on people actually contributing anymore. Uh, they make a lot more money in the markets than, yeah than tithing these days. So uh, they still like doing that. They still like being a public, uh, I mean, you'd call them an eyesore, except they are kind of pretty, <laughs> these temples. Mm. Uh, they very purposefully make them lavish and and uh, uh, like they, over they the want them to stick out. Yeah, yeah it's the, they see a temple, a publicly viewable temple as uh, as good as a billboard. So they like, uh, the temple closest to me is off of this highway called C-470, and it is 
clearly positioned in a way with all of the forest around it, like shaved away. Right. And it's kind of raised up on a hill so that you can't miss it when you're driving on the highway. That does not surprise me. <laughs> the next one no. is, uh, hang on, let me just catch up here. Notable sermons included words of warning from 70, uh, from 70 Peter M. Johnson to beware of Satan's temptations. It was, it was memorable in every way, every way, every way, not only for its rhetorical cadence, but for its historical precedent as the first general conference addressed by an African-American general authority. That's super interesting. The tender treatment of depression, anxiety, and other forms of mental and emotional affliction by Reina Alberto, or Alberto, second counselor in the Relief Society General Presidency, drew notice, as did Apostle Dieter F something something Uchtdorf. yeah yeah Uchtdorf. uh his call to high gospel adventure through the inspiration of diminutive bilbo baggins of jrr tolkien's the hobbit okay what do, does I'd, that mean i'd actually like speech? to watch that speech because his accent is very it's like a very clear and intense uh, uh arnold schwarzenegger really? almost and so to hear him say Bilbo Baggins it probably sounds pretty cool. Oh, my um, God. That sounds awesome. To the top bit, though, keep in mind that right now society is going through a thing of uh, uh, with people and corporations where they're going like, hey, you knew this was wrong back then. And you still do, did it. Things like with Justin Trudeau and blackface, who uh, yeah. uh, I mean, a, a lot of people are forgiving people, especially when they actually seem apologetic. Yeah. But in the case of Mormonism right now, it's coming back up of the like, hey, you can't pretend the racism didn't exist now that the Internet uh, you used right, to just exactly. lie. Now the Internet exists. And so they have been doing over the last few years, a little bit at a time, somewhat tokenesque featuring of people of color. So there still is not a black apostle. Uh, I believe there's now he might be Brazilian. So. Mm. Do you uh, think that, that they would the allow first. a black apostle or? It, that's a good question, because while they don't want to acknowledge it, Mormons still do believe that black people are descendants of Cain and that their color uh, is is a result of a curse put on them. Yeah. Um, and so that's a good question of whether or not they would let things get that far, whether or not they'd let an apostle. Now, this guy who has joined the 70, the 70 are like, first of all, there's way more than 70 of them. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the 70 are kind of like they're the only thing under apostle, like the or the only the only thing higher than a 70 is an apostle. Uh, and and so they have different duties in different regions and stuff. Um, they're so really I'm almost surprised. Up, yeah, I think a lot of people in the church are thinking, well, if, if a black person can be a 70, they can definitely be an apostle. But I don't know for a fact that that is, uh, in fact, the case. And especially with how quote unquote traditional uh some of these guys who are left uh are i would guess that much like significant change on queer issues it's going to take some of these people to die off before yeah and i guess uh, it's kind of a believe comes. it when you see it kind of thing then right yeah yeah okay. yeah exactly and it's and it'll be you know behind societies shortly after society demands more Right. Uh, because that's the timeline God works on. Right. Exactly. OK, the next one here. This is actually the last one, too. It says Nelson also primed the pump for next April's general conference, vowing it will be different from any previous conference. Why? Because the church will be celebrating the 200th anniversary of founder Joseph Smith's first vision, which gave birth to the Mormon movement. Thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, a 200th anniversary of one of the first visions, because the uh, there are multiple accounts of the first vision with not just differing details on whether it was God or God and Jesus Christ, but also the age. And at the at the end of the day, they went with the the uh, version that was him at the youngest, uh, uh, him him the youngest he ever was. But there are other accounts of him saying it happened when he was in his 20s, penned in his own hand. Right. Uh, so it's kind of up in the air. And there's actually a picture here uh, on the website of Joseph Smith. Like, I guess it's a depiction of the first vision, like two angels or something yeah. standing over him or whatever. No, that's Jesus and God. Remember oh. that they are Caucasians with yeah. silver hair. That is how exactly. uh, Joseph actually <laughs> describes them as having white skin. There, are, There is no color skin, uh, no skin color in heaven. I made a caricature of myself in this 
of this thing you're looking at right now. Did you? I, I, those caricatures I used to do, used to make early on in my show, mm. I made a caricature of, of me in the first vision. That's hilarious. You got to send that to me. I'll, I'll drop it in the video uh, right at It'd this be point. probably super easy to find if you want to. Do you want to go to it real quick? I could tell sure, you. Sure, sure, yeah. Where, where do I find it? In. So go to, go to my YouTube channel and just type in the first vision. Hang on. This is actually one of my oldest videos and still one of the videos I am the proudest of. What was the name of the video again? Uh, just type in the first vision. The first vision, Book of Mormon Origins. What's wrong with Mormonism? Wow, yeah, you still Dude, got Mr. like the, the beard and everything. That's awesome. See. That was the one where I kept like trying to prove that like I don't want to be offensive. So I'm just going to use a different casual name for Joseph Smith every time. So he had this name tag bit where like I was calling him like Jay Smizzle and Joey Smith and Wesson. I hate that I typed in first vision just to the regular thing. I have more views on that video than any of the other videos that came up. And yet it, I wasn't in any of the suggested. Right. Just sitting there like that's kind of. Yeah, that's kind of BS. Yeah. I just realized too that I have God and Jesus mixed on which who was on which side. Okay, there you go. Oh, oh that's awesome. Okay. So God is on one side and Jesus is on the other side, huh? Yeah, God is supposed to be the one on the right. He's who I put in the suit. Is and there then... like a reason for that? Because in this picture that we were looking at, they look exactly the same, like almost identical. Let me switch back to the... Yeah, uh, let... There you go. Let's go back to that picture. I want to see the... Uh, uh, because there's the whole point is that uh, at one point in the story, God gestures to his right and says... This is my beloved son, oh. hear him. And that's the only thing that God actually says to Joseph. Okay, I understand. That that makes sense. Well, that's that's interesting. I don't know. Th this whole thing is really fascinating to me. And honestly, uh, these changes, I feel, they could have been worse. Like it, at previous general conferences, they've done some really ass backwards stuff to LGBT uh, communities. At previous conferences, they've done things like made it so that LGBT people had less representation. They, their kids weren't allowed to um, be full members and things like yeah. that, right? Yeah, so they had, uh, and they reversed that policy recently um, because, you know, again, just a coincidence that mm. society hated it. Right. Um, but they released that uh, right before, they announced it right before a conference. I don't know whether or not they touched on it again at conference, uh, I think they did it in one of their special meetings mm. uh, with like the institute age kids um, right. that they that they announced it. Well, like I said, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that they didn't do anything like super shady and 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 really fuck somebody over who doesn't deserve it. Uh, it seems like these were yeah. fairly standard like doctrinal changes and things like that. I'd really like to see them move forward with with some things though. But anyway, I appreciate you coming on and talking. It's been pretty awesome. Um, I guess I'm gonna get to super chats and stuff. Just so you know, uh, we have a uh, 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 this is this is I'm gonna say this thing where people are gonna be like, oh, I want to go on, mm. but uh, the cool creators are getting together and hanging out afterwards. So I hope you're gonna stay awake long enough for that. Maybe we can talk about doing something with the temp the whole temple recommend thing. Okay. Okay, I'm serious about that though. When you get done, message me so I can send you a link to okay. our cool kid hangout. All right, I will. Okay, cool. All right, I'll talk to you yeah, in a bit. That wasn't a joke. Okay. <laughs> All right, later. That's pretty cool. I appreciate, appreciate you coming on like that. That was really interesting. Going to have a lot to cut out and rearrange and everything with all the searching, but 100% uh, worth it. It was definitely worth it, I think, that, that whole thing. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I'm trying to make a shirt design for every cult I've covered. I haven't gotten every one, but I'm working on it. So check it out and see if your cult is up there. Second, you can support me by checking out my game shop. I sell controller, cartridge, and game box stands for every system from the original Nintendo and Sega Game Gear to the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. So give that a look too. And finally, if you want to support me in some way other than monetarily, you can check out my other YouTube channels. I have a retro game channel where I answer questions like, why does Shy Guy have a mask? And why are CRT TVs the best way to play retro games? I also have the podcast where I talk about stuff I don't feel I can say on a monetized channel. And finally, I have my main channel, where I talk about cults. I wish I didn't have to worry about dancing around subjects carefully in the first place, but I chose to do this as a full-time job, so unfortunately, I rely on YouTube's AdSense and on the support of patrons to continue doing the work I do. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.